Hi, welcome to the channel. In this session, we want to continue to speak about and explore being rooted and grounded in the love of Christ. Now, in the previous uh, three videos that we've dealt with the subject, we spoke about the fact of the absolute essential ingredient of free will. So just think about it like this. In the Garden of Eden, it was an absolute paradise with perfection, where Adam and Eve could enjoy uh, eating of all the fruits of all the trees in the garden. They could enjoy fellowship with God um, as he came in the cool of the day to meet with them. Angels were present. Um, so <clears throat> there was absolute perfection and beauty and peace in that garden. Now, in that situation, it was very difficult for Adam and Eve to appreciate how very privileged they were. And so Paul in Romans chapter 1 speaks about this and says that while they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, neither were they thankful, but they became vain in their imagination and their foolish heart was darkened. So in that absolute paradise, they had no other comparison and they couldn't fully appreciate the beauty and the wonder and the absolute privilege and honor that was theirs. So God in his infinite wisdom introduced into that perfect garden the freedom of choice. And so when Adam and Eve exercised their freedom of choice to disobey God, they immediately found themselves in a position of guilt. They were accountable for their actions because of their freedom of choice. So freedom of choice, choice brings accountability. And accountability brings us into a place of guilt, condemnation, and shame. And while that's a very negative thing, God has in his wonderful wisdom and his foreknowledge, he has really allowed us to make those choices to get into this position because in offering to us wonderful salvation, forgiveness, and redemption in mercy and grace, we from our position of shame and guilt and condemnation can now fully appreciate the gift of God that, that he's giving to us. So what we said was that the extent to which you accept your accountability and the guilt of your sin, to that degree, you're able then to respond to the mercy of God and appreciate what he has done for you. We also spoke about gratitude as being a very important element in being rooted and grounded in Christ. The only way to be absolutely thankful is to appreciate the fallen estate, the point to which we have fallen short of the glory of God, so that we can now respond to his mercy with absolute gratitude. So we're able to glorify God as God and be thankful because we are the recipients of the gift of salvation, of forgiveness, the being clothed with the righteousness of Jesus Christ, and being given the opportunity to now come boldly into the presence of God. What a privilege and an honor is ours. And so in this session, I want to deal with another very vital element of being rooted and grounded in the love of Christ. And it's the element of rest. So let's dive in and explore this and unpack it and allow these things to filter deep down into our hearts so that we can far better appreciate the depths of what Paul is saying about our being rooted and grounded in the love of Christ. Rooted and Grounded in Love, Part 4 Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day God had finished the work that he had been doing. So on the seventh day he rested from all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. Genesis chapter 2, 1 through 3. So looking at the creation narrative, this is what we are told 
that right at the very beginning, the creation was starts off formless and empty with darkness upon the face of the deep. And then at the end of the creation story in chapter one, creation is finished with it being very good and with rest. The first chapter of Genesis has a magnificent literary design and there are so many sevens in it. The last book of the Bible ends with at least 40 sevens indicating that the completeness of the work of God at the end. The first sentence of the Bible in Hebrew has seven words and the second sentence has two times seven which is 14 words and the paragraph at the end talking about the seven days has 21 words. You can see the the beauty and the design in this presentation. Creation has uh, was completed in seven days, and there are seven announcements that the creation is good. The evening and the morning are not mentioned in the seventh day, representing a timeless or eternal rest. So, what is important to realize is that Genesis chapter one is like reading the preface to a book. It is an introduction, but it also tells us exactly what God is intending to do right throughout the Bible. So it's giving us a summary of God's work throughout all of time and how he's working with us. It tells us that God took the empty, chaotic darkness and introduced order, beauty, goodness, and finally rest. This represents the message of the whole Bible. So God is taking this current broken world and introducing order, beauty, and peace or rest. And God, through the gospel, is offering to take each individual life that is in darkness, emptiness, and chaos through sin and introduce his order, beauty, and rest. So God is doing this right throughout the scriptures. The emphasis on the day of rest is seen right throughout the history of Israel throughout the Old Testament. The seventh day, the Sabbath, was the day of rest. And of course, there was the seventh year of rest and the year of Jubilee. So all of this is emphasizing the tremendous importance of rest. As we've said, rest is a very vital subject right throughout the whole of the Bible. One of the most anticipated years in the Jewish calendar was the glorious expectation year of Jubilee. Slaves are set free, the land is restored, people are returned to where God placed them. It's a year of generosity, debt is cancelled, the whole economy is reset, and everyone and everything is at rest. So everything is redeemed, people are set free. It's a time of celebration, of great joy, and of worshipping the Lord. It's a, it's a year that is set aside as unto the Lord. Now, the question that we need to ask is, what has this got to do with me? It's all very well for the Jewish nation to have this wonderful year of Jubilee. But how does this fit into the New Testament and into our experience, and particularly the subject that we're dealing with? How does it affect my being rooted and grounded in the love of Christ? And the wonderful truth about this is it has everything to do with, with me and with salvation that is being offered to us through the Lord Jesus. Jesus went down to Nazareth and on the Sabbath day, he called for the scroll, stood up and he began to read as he opened it. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has appointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, or to proclaim the year of Jubilee. Jesus was the fulfillment of the year of Jubilee, and he has come to set the prisoners free. We who have been uh, enslaved by sin, he is setting us free. We who are poor in spirit, he has come to enrich us. He's come to set prisoners free that are bound by addictions and by worries and stress and anxiety. He has come to recover our spiritual sight so that we can now see and understand and comprehend 
the love of God with all the saints, the length and the breadth and the depth and the height, and to set the oppressed free. And so we've entered into this glorious jubilee because we've come to know Jesus Christ. He has become our jubilee and he has become our rest. In the light of this, let us have a look at this famous invitation that Jesus offers to us. He said, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I'm gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So we don't have to wait 49 years for our year of Jubilee. We've been in, invited by the Lord Jesus himself to come to him and he will give us this Jubilee. He will set us free from the anxieties, the condemnation, the guilt of sin and all the things that weigh down upon us. All those who are weary and burdened, he will give us rest. And then he's inviting us to learn from him how to deal with our day-to-day -day situations, anxieties, stresses, and testings, so, so that we learn from him to cast ourselves upon the Lord and in so doing, find ourselves rooted and grounded in Jesus Christ, no matter what life throws at us. So it is a place of security and a place of jubilation and joy that we find in the Lord Jesus. And so that's why I'm saying this rest that the Lord is offering to us is not just a siesta. It's not just something where we have a few moments of um, rest and of, and of peace, but it is a life of peace, a life of joy, a life of security as we are rooted and grounded in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so finally, let's just say this, that when you look at the salvation that God is offering to us in his son, Jesus Christ, it is extremely elaborate. He has right from the beginning of the Bible, from the beginning of time, he has woven into the history of mankind and particularly into the history of the Jewish nation, this whole concept of the rest and jubilee and liberty that is to be found in his son, Jesus Christ. So the whole of the Old Testament is a spearheaded towards and is directed towards our understanding of the greatness of the Lord Jesus. So may we embrace him with all of our heart and soul and mind and strength and find our security as we're rooted and grounded in him. Amen.